Welcome to your one stop and shop video regarding the brand new Bedwars update. This video will cover everything about the new update and even how to rush on each of the seven brand new maps. I'm not gonna lie, this update is probably the biggest W that the Bedwars community has had in a while. Bigger than the rotational items update in my opinion. So let's dive right into the updates. According to the forum post, Bedwars has been updated with new rotating items, new maps, bug fixes, quality of life changes, and new practice modes. I would go over the rotational items first, but they actually never mentioned anything about the items in the forum post. If they do in fact add new rotational items, I'll definitely be continuing my rotational item series on my channel. Feel free to check out that playlist right here. Now let's talk about the new practice modes. I'm actually really excited about the pearl clutching mode, as I really need some work on that. As always, you can customize the practice mode, this time with three variables, being distance, direction, and random inventory slot. The bowing practice mode is also really unique and helpful as you get to practice all different kinds of bow situations. The variables you can change in this practice mode are the target distance and height, and the target type. You also have specific target type variables, such as the movement of the target and the speed. Next up, we have some brand new maps. I'm actually pretty excited about these new maps, as we got four new maps for ones and twos, and three new maps for threes and fours. Here's a closer look at each of them. This is a new solo and duos map called Ambush. Ambush is actually a fitting name for the aesthetics of this map, that being a collection of cool yet ancient looking forest structures. I believe that this map is a diamond rush that uses a minimum of 48 blocks, but I could also see this map being a side rush which uses a minimum of 64 blocks. Our second solos and duos map is called Impure. I don't know how to say this because when I looked it up it gave me a foreign medicine, so hopefully Impure is correct. This map kind of gives me Zarzul vibes because of the diamonds in the back, making them so much more valuable. This map is a side rush that uses a minimum of 48 blocks. This is Sanctum, a cool, futuristic, and utopian looking solos and duos map. This map definitely has a playground feel to it with these islands between the player bases and mid, but I actually quite like the placement of them. This map is a side rush that uses a minimum of 48 blocks. This is Urban Plaza, a cool map that definitely took inspiration from Cascade and Cliffside. I'm intrigued by middle, as there's an emerald generator that's not far from the player bases. This map is a backwards diagonal rush, but I can also see it being a side rush, both of which will use a minimum of 48 blocks. I gotta say, these maps look really cool already, but will definitely look better with my 1000 subscriber texture pack made by the one and only Vanilla Spooks. If you want to know when that releases, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the release. This is the first of three threes and fours maps that was released called Orchid. This map looks to have taken heavy inspiration from the solo and duos map called Lotus. Lastly, this map is a side diamond rush that uses a minimum of 32 blocks. Rays is the name of this threes and fours map and I absolutely love the name. That alone makes it really appealing to me in the map selector menu. I think this map is actually an original and unique map, which is super exciting because it looks amazing. I believe that this is a side diamond rush that uses a minimum of 48 blocks, but I can also see it being a diagonal incline which uses a minimum of 64 blocks. The last new map on our list is called Infinite, which looks to be another rectangular map like Acropolis. I actually really like how this one looks and plays, especially with these secret vines connecting the two emerald generators. This map is a forward diamond rush that uses a minimum of 64 blocks. If you'd like me to make a video playing on these new maps, then let me know. I'd be down to make a video about that, but only if you guys want to see it. And please correct me if I'm wrong on any of the rushes. This is just me looking at the maps in replay mod and not having played on them yet. Moving on from the new maps, we also got a few new quests to increase the rate at which we progress through stars. These quests consist of Painsomnia, Headhunter, Finishing the Job, and Challenger. They also added 250 more experience to the One More Game quest and 250 more Bedwars coins to the first win of the day quest. Unfortunately, I'm not good enough for this part of the update, but if you're above 3000 stars, then enjoy the new prestige colors. I will say, these look really freaking cool. This update also brought us some quality of life and balancing changes, all of which are on screen now. But the notable ones are the changes to the quick buy menu, the ability to change your hotbar layout from the lobby, pickup rules, 
pistols, and that chain armor was reduced again to 24 iron from 30. Maybe chain is actually worth it when you don't have enough gold. A few other items got reduced in price as well. Lastly, the forge team upgrade now increases the amount of resources the generator can hold at once, which is a great addition. The last mention on the forum post was about some needed bug fixes, but there's nothing too major through this section. Overall, this update is a huge deal for the Bedwars community. I've never been more excited to play Bedwars than now, so I hope that the bigger update that they yet again teased will release soon. That's all I've got for today, so I'll see you later. Peace out.